Hi, I'm Vita Kwaki with Vita's Collectibles and I'm here to show you how to use a product called White Velvet. Um, what White Velvet is is a matting agent and it's mixed with water-based medium and it will give you um, a beautiful background once it's dried and you carve it out with um, an etching stick and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. At the end of the video we'll tell you how to purchase the product at VitasCollectibles.com. To use the white velvet, I keep a separate little kit with my tile and my palette knife because I want everything to be oil free. If it's not oil free, you're going to have a problem with the mixing. And then it's easy to grab. Uh, anytime you want to do a little project, you're not running around looking for every little thing that you need to start. Uh, white velvet is tinted with a vegetable dye, and that is only to see. Um, where you're carving after it is patted on and dried you will see where your carving is otherwise if you're carving on white glazed porcelain you can't see your lines but this uh, red vegetable dye or pink in this case uh, fires out I start with my water-based medium and I mix to about a heavy cream consistency and it has to be water-based medium because it has to dry. Because if, if it did not dry, you wouldn't be able to etch it out on um, something that was mixed with oil. So now I'm getting to about the consistency. I might have gotten it a little thin at this point. I might add a little bit more powder. The nice thing about this is if you mix too much powder and you have some left over, you can easily store it. I store mine in a little container marked white velvet in my kit and I can reconstitute that with a little bit of water so it is not wasted which is a nice thing. So once I get all the little grains out, I want it nice and smooth because if, if you don't it's going to show up in your work. I'd say that is a pretty good consistency. And then I also keep a little vial of water and I add a drop, maybe a two, drop or two of water to make um, a light cream consistency. I started out with kind of a heavy cream and this will be a, a lighter cream consistency. And now I'm about ready to uh, start patting my piece. Make sure it's mixed up really well. I went ahead and I um, resisted this this plate and it's dry. I did that the other day and now I'm going to go ahead and pad this on for an edging as an example. And I just use, you can use cotton batting. Uh, this is some kind of quilt batting I think. What I really like to use this with is sports wrap. Uh, it gives a little bit of a texture and I believe you can get the sports wrap in any drugstore and it's got a little bit of texture to it just enough where it makes the white velvet look like velvet. Um, I suppose you could use silk, you'd get a, a smoother surface, but that's not really my goal. I want a little bit of texture. So I'm going to fold this over and make sure there's no wrinkles on it. And I will dip it into my white velvet. And I will start patting. And you see that little bit of texture that's coming there? I want an even texture. Uh, I did learn the hard way uh, with white velvet not to put it on too heavily uh, because I did have a chipping problem. So thinner is better yet you don't want to really see your white china through there so you have to uh, get a little used to how you are going to apply it and it, it, like anything else it takes practice and it's good if I can set this down on a firm surface and pat it heavily. Now at this point I probably wouldn't go back and um, play with this too much because I could end up getting it too heavy and not an even consistency. So I like that texture look and like I said if you don't um, 
certainly feel free to go back and uh, use a silk instead, something smoother, but um, this is supposed to be white velvet, so I want it, the texture to be a little velvety looking. So at this point, I would make sure, maybe, so I'm not seeing any of my white. I'd say that's pretty even. I would let this dry now, um, overnight, or hit it with a hair dryer. Um, depends, on, depends on the humidity in your um, studio, of course, but um, you could set it in the sun even, and probably uh, start carving it in the next half hour. I will save my leftover white velvet and like I said before um, I can reconstitute this on the tile uh, for another use with a little bit of water and so um, I just store that and put it away in my little kit. Now I've let this dry uh, you can tell if it's not dry enough when you start to carve it'll smear but I can tell by touching it that uh, it's going to be just fine uh, you can't leave it on too long, that's not going to be a problem, so you don't have to worry about when you get back to it at this point. A uh, little bit about the Red Resist. I applied that with a synthetic brush to the areas that I did not want the white velvet on. So that's the reason for this uh, rough outer edge. I wasn't concerned about that outer edge when I put on the Resist. I was only concerned about this edge. And as you can see, maybe it's not as smooth as I would have liked the white velvet to be, but this is uh, j just for a demonstration purpose. I'm going to remove the resist now, and I keep a little X-Acto knife in my uh, tools. And I did it did seep through here a little bit, no problem, because that's what we do as we carve off all that excess white velvet. So I will just take off a little bit of this for now. Now this white velvet over red resist is water base over water base so sometimes resist can get a little sticky and a little stubborn taking it off so you kind of need to take your time. But actually the red resist one or the white velvet once it's dry it's uh, very durable actually until of course until you scratch it. And I do have a tissue laid here, so I have, I'll have easy cleanup when I'm finished. I have an old mop brush, a clean mop brush handy. I like to clean up my area a little bit. And I tried different um, items for carving. I used a pen. I used a pencil. I tried um, a stylist. I tried different things. What I like the best, actually, is a wooden skewer. And what I do is I just take and bust the end off, and I put it in one of these uh, pen holders. And now if I want a tiny little line to carve out, I would use a very, very sharp skewer. Now I like this one that's a little blunt and worn down. I keep different sizes in my kit for whatever I'm working on. The biggest mistake I made when I started doing the white velvet was using too thin of a scratch line. And you could not see my glazed china behind it. So I think a thicker line is better actually, and so that's what um, I go with. It works very, very well for me, and I love the pen holder because I can get a grip on it. Because after a lot of carving, it, it does get uh, a little tiring on your hand. So I decide on a pattern, uh, if depending on what my piece was. Uh, for example, this piece was mums, and so I decided I needed to do mum leaves in the background. That was my choice to carve. So I freehanded this out with my wipeout tool. Uh, you could, at this point, lay a pattern on here and trace it with some graphite lightly and take it off and use that as your pattern. I don't uh, like to work that way. I'm gonna, just going to freehand do it. And I might be doing roses on this plate, so let's just do little rose leaves. It's good if you can um, hold your plate tightly to the surface and I would just start freehanding 
and you get that little bit of buildup, and that's what the mop brush is for to knock it away and continue on. It doesn't look like much yet, but it gives a nice subtle appearance to your background. We zoomed in for a little bit better view of the carving. And like I said before, I'm just freehand uh, carving these, etching out these designs. And I try to tie the design into what I might be painting on. So this just gives you a general idea of the carving. These are looking more like holly leaves. Maybe I will be putting um, a Christmas design on this piece. Uh, my options are open at this point. For some reason I must be thinking Christmas, so holly. My brush is shedding a little bit, so. All right. So that's the way I would continue along around. And you can see my my point is uh, just wide enough where I can see where I went on the pink white velvet which of course will fire white. Now after this is completely carved and all the resist is taken off it's fired at 017. This is what the piece looked like. This has been fired at 017 and I did circular scrolls and S's on this and after I took it out of the kiln, I, I did sand it slightly with um, just a little bit of sandpaper. Lightly, there was a little bit of buildup, but it's perfect. It's just what I was looking for. So at this point, uh, it's time for the Mother of Pearl. And what happens when you apply the Mother of Pearl, the white velvet becomes matte, and what's underneath and what's carved out will be shiny and glazed. This is the Mother of Pearl. Mother of Pearl brush and Mother of Pearl comes in all colors and I think they just dye it to so that you can see it as you're using it. Now I would go over that scrolling edge because I want that to be shiny and I would apply the Mother of Pearl I would stroke it completely around the whole edge if you pull your colors towards you, your brush strokes, you get a straighter line. Not always perfect, but straighter. At this point, after the Mother of Pearl's been applied, this piece would be fired at 017 and ready for your design. Uh, let me show you a few pieces that I have uh, done with white velvet. This was a piece I was designing for the IPAT convention in Las Vegas and I wanted to get as many techniques on it as I could and I debated what to do with this background and white velvet came to me and this was my first try at white velvet. and I've been doing white velvet ever since. Now as you can see I carved out mums, mum leaves on the background to um, tie in with my mum design which worked out very well and you can see my lines are quite thick. Like I said before uh, that was one of the things I learned by um, trial and error, uh, if you use too thin of a wipeout tool, you're not going to get a very thick line and that mother pearl is not going to show through in that carving. Now here's another example. This is clematis with white velvet and I did circular um, motions because I thought this design fit the climbing clematis uh, a little bit better than uh, than a leaf design, than a plain leaf design. Here's another clematis 
on the plate. Same design, different concept with uh, white velvet. I did kind of a puzzle design on this, uh, like S's and C's that connected. And I thought that was a little interesting because of the curve of the plate and um, the curve of the scrolls. And this is white velvet on this rose vase. And you can see here I used rose leaves. I could have done roses. I thought uh, the leaves were a little more subtle. I used a a pretty wide wipeout tool, which I like, uh, because the smaller the tool, the more carving you're going to have to do. And here's an example of the white velvet on an ornament, and this is the holly design on each side, and it's just holly leaves uh, with non-ping and mother of pearl, of course. So. Have fun with the white velvet and experiment. Uh, it's a fun way to uh, finish up a piece and give it a subtle background that does not take away from your main subject matter. Um, have fun. If you have any questions, uh, contact me through my website, vitascollectibles.com. Thank you for watching my video on white velvet. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing my products, I have the white vel velvet available on my website and also my uh, formula for water-based medium in one ounce and two ounce bottles. If you fill out the form on my website under the product page, uh, you can run that off and send it to me and I'll get that product out as soon as possible. Uh, I hope that you will stay tuned because there's going to be more videos and demonstrations to follow.